for him. And I came here 10 years ago to preach. It's not the same we see. And that's a good thing. Come on now, let's give God a hand clap of praise for, for progress. Those words from the Baptist church, we've never done it this way before, has stifled us in our prophetic worship where we put preach, priestly items before we do the prophetic. But you can't do the work of God unless the, the anointing and the prophetic is in you. And so we've got to be free to worship God in spirit and in truth. And so we thank God for your vision, Pastor. So right now you're sitting next to somebody who all stuffy and stifled. Tell them, excuse me, baby, I got to move because the word is about to come. He can do it for you. 
that the words of my mouth and the reflections of my consciousness be acceptable in thy sight. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, reads as follows. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would really obey his commands. That is our scripture and our text for today, and I'll, I'll read it again. For those of you who have not frequented churches normally, because this is the word of God, we stand if we're able in reference to the scripture. So I'll do it again so that we can be the beloved community and come together, Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Remember how the Lord your God, this is Moses speaking, led you through the wilderness for 40 years humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would really obey his commands. The celebration of this 150th anniversary of the great historic Wheat Street Baptist Church, I'd like to speak on a topic where we go from here. Where do we go from here? There is a song by a man named Jimmy Glyph from Jamaica. And he says that the name of the song is Many Rivers to Cross. Olita Adams was in town not long ago and she sings the song Many Rivers to Cross. And she says, Many Rivers to Cross, but I can't seem to find my way over. I was at a concert recently and she started singing the song, Pastor, and I started to cry in the middle of a jazz concert with my husband. And he touched me on my shoulder and he said, are you okay? And I said, I'm having a moment. Many rivers to cross, but I can't seem to find my way over because it seems like we've got to, as black people, continue to cross the rivers that we thought we crossed long ago. And yet we've got another river to cross. Find ourselves like Wheat Street, you've been on a journey. And all of us have been on a spiritual journey. Moses and the journey of the Hebrews, Exodus from Egypt, and their long period of servitude to newfound freedom. Our scripture today deals with Moses giving the people a sermon. Their journey up to this point is not just about yesterday. It is about the preparation for today and tomorrow. You miss the point, Wheat Street, if you just stay here and celebrate. The Mount of, Christ of Transfiguration they didn't want to leave. They said, Kate, you just stay. And Jesus said, oh, no, 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 you got too much to do. You would miss the point if 150 years you stayed right where you are instead of following the vision of the pastor and going and doing another work for another 150 years journey up to this point has been about yesterday. Moses is about to go home to be with the Lord. Didn't I just tell you as you, you get older, things change. You, you don't like what you used to like. Material things don't mean as much to you. The number one thing you want to do is have good health. Because as you get older, your body starts turning on you. You know what I mean. You waited all this time to retire, and then you're in and out of going to doctor's offices, and what used to be important is not important anymore. But it's been a journey, hasn't it? If you look back over your life, it's been a journey. 
filled with twists and turns. And in Deuteronomy 8 and 2, Moses invites Israel to take a stroll with him down memory lane. Remember, they've been on a 40-year spiritual journey together, much like Wheat Street has. And Moses was letting them know, look, let's do some talking for just a little while. Unlike the children of Israel, we may be at different places on our journey, but we're in and out of the wilderness in America right now. We, I feel like I'm in exile in my own country. Dealing with white supremacy from the White House. A house that we built. And where is our unadulterated outrage? It is the silence that is most frightening to me because we've seen his type before. The Wallaces, we've seen the Lestomatics, we've seen that before. Now my 13-year-old granddaughter hadn't seen it, but God has a sense of you. God made me and this generation to see what we knew so that they could finally value what we sacrificed to give them. So they were all waiting at the telegraph stations, waiting on the news, much like you do when the new iPhone is coming out. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Then in 1867, we, we have Morehouse Colleges founded. And then 1867, in that same year, the Reconstruction Act was passed by Congress. And then Howard University is chartered. But then comes 1869. Those few that decided to say we're going to give birth to this church, what else was going on? Well, the 15th Amendment, we talk about other amendments, but the 15th Amendment to the Constitution gave African American males the right to vote. Black men gets it, and that black man from Harvard finally finished law school there. During that time, I went back and looked at the census. There were 4,808,000 black folk there. 12% of the population was black. But codified in the laws was an ideology of white supremacy. And that's what's going on. Slavery, so-called slavery ends in 1865. And how many of you know we're living in a continuation of reconstruction Jim Crow, Reconstruction, and now we're back again in oppression. 
seven million under supervision of some kind with a criminal justice system that incarcerates more people than any place else in the world because the prison industrial complex is the last stronghold that in public government education is the last stronghold of oppression that the oppressor feels he can have on us. But we must be weary that we are not our own worst enemy. Because the master has done a job on our consciousness. That we are a jealous, envious people and we just don't get what we need to do for our people. Because if one child is walking on Auburn Avenue and they're hungry, your heart needs to break for that one child that's hungry. I can't be satisfied with just my degree if we can't educate more. talking about being in the wilderness. Remember the wilderness, it was God who was with you in the wilderness. Before we embark on a journey today, I, I don't want you to forget where you came from. All y'all country. Me too. How many of y'all, would mother would make you green? And when the greens were fixed, that juice that was in the green, that pop knuckle, pop knuckle, pop knuckle, and then she'd take that skillet in the cornbread, and you'd suck, oh, y'all gonna act like y'all don't know.
a statement of clarity. I don't want to make it clear that the inadequacies of the American caste system, and when I call it out, I'm not trying to say that we don't have problems that we brought on ourselves. But you have to understand, it wasn't a fair starting line. It, 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 it wasn't. When doctor went to medical school, we had to be 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times better. When Lisa, my friend, was over the city council, when Natalie, my friend, is where she is, get it in your consciousness right now because I know what God has said to me. We don't have the same standards, but when you got God on your side, you don't have to worry about a thing. You don't have to fear. My eyes have seen the God of the coming of the Lord. I don't fear anybody. And that was Dr. King Cola. So now we're at a point. Bring me in, musician. They got me on a time frame here, so I got to end this thing here. So now we are at a point in the sermon today that I want to help you and you answer it for yourself. What do we do now? Where do we go from here? Remember, I started the sermon saying that we're on a spiritual journey. Someone here today says, yes, I, I remember the wilderness, but how can I get where I want to go? And, and, and this is the part now, we talked about the past, now let's talk about the future. We have a good crowd in here today, but now we need people under 25 to come in like never before. That's what we need. We can't build churches with old folk like us. We need young people. We need steppers. We need dancers. We need drummers. We need all of that. We got to reach out to a new of your life 
Remove the weight of the blame game. Stop being a victim to the oppressor. You oppressed because you want to be oppressed. I'm not thinking about that thing in the White House because he sold the seed of his own destruction. They ain't got work upon the law. Show and do that shit. You ain't got to preach about him. You ain't got to call his name. You just wait on the law. Remove the weight of complaining and never be satisfied. And then now, as I told you, All you have to do is type in the address and hit directions, and it tells you where to go. It put the GPS system out of business because you don't need that anymore. But what was happening is the GPS is a worldwide satellite navigational system formed by 24 satellites orbiting the Earth and their corresponding receivers on the Earth. And that's how it kind of works. I'm that kind of mind where I got to know how everything works that I'm dealing with. And so what I'm thinking about is God's positioning system. And what does that mean? G, God, GPS. We're talking about goals. And we're talking about purpose. And we're talking about strategy. Goals for your own life and what you plan to do. Purpose is that divine destiny that God has in store for you. Strategy is how we're not going to do what we used to do in the past and we're going to do it a different way. So then you come to a point with that GPS that it leads you to different places but sometimes it takes you the long way home. Many rivers to cross but you still had made your way across any of them. I, I, I want you to know today as I leave you and really this time as I close, God will never take you anywhere that God has not made a way for your success. I don't serve that kind of God. Young people, you're getting ready to start school. Don't you understand? We invented mathematics and philosophy. We invented all of those things, and you need to be telling your children not to fear math, not to fear science. Right now, I'm in a PhD program, two years from having a PhD in statistics and criminology. And when I was in school, they told me I couldn't do math. All I needed to do was English. I'm the number one person.
Yes.